Hello friends of .NET, I'm Emil Landrov and you can find me on Twitter at Terrajobs. In this video I'm going to talk about our new portability analyzer that ships with .NET 5. So many of you have complained to me over the years that we have APIs in the base class libraries that only work on Windows, or more specifically that there are APIs that don't work everywhere. And so you asked me to fix this by removing the APIs from .NET Standard or from .NET Core and Generally speaking, that's not what we want because we do care about backwards compatibility so we want to keep things uh, where they are. But the question really is, how do you know upfront that things won't work? Sure, there's documentation, but let's face it, we only ever read them and things go south. So if you have an API that you think you can call and you test it on an operating system, you generally expect the API to work everywhere. And so while you should have unit tests uh, or on your CI machine against all the operating systems you tend to support, you also don't want to find out three hours into your coding that things don't work, right? So you really care about getting this information uh, as early as possible. And this is exactly what our portability analyzer solves. So let's take a look. So in this case here, I have an application. It's a it's a Blazor WebAssembly application, which uh, has three projects. So we do have our, uh, our client project, which is basically our WebAssembly uh, code that actually runs in the browser. We have a .NET Core uh, ASP.NET application on the server that serves this application, um, where you can have your backend logic, um, uh, you know, your web APIs and whatnot. And then we also have a shared project that is, uh, you know, where you put your data transfer objects. In our case, you know, just a weather forecast thing. And that is basically exactly what the template is. So if we just look at this app here, we have our typical, uh, you know, counter page or index page. And so now let's think about what happens if I try to evolve this application, right? So in my case, I don't like this hello friend. So let's say I wanna uh, say hello and then the current username, right? So one thing I might reasonably do is I might Google C sharp get locked in username. And then of course I find Stack Overflow, which I learned to trust over the years, right? And so now I just copy and paste the, the answer with the highest votes. I now go into my application here, find the index page, perfect. Uh, this is where it says "imo," right? And now I want to I want to see here the actual username. And as you all know, senior developers don't copy from Stack Overflow. Senior developers copy from Stack Overflow and make sure that nobody knows they copied from Stack Overflow. So you have to change something, right? You have to change the name, remove all these you know stupid comments and stuff, right? I'm joking, but we have all done this at some point, right? To hide our tracks, right? Anyway, so let's say I do this, right? which I've done a million times before, copy and pasting stuff from Stack Overflow. And now I run this app again and boom, I get an exception. And so if we actually look into the exception here, the exception mesh is actually somewhat reasonable. It basically says, well, Windows principal functionality is not supported on this platform, which makes sense because you run inside the browser sandbox so you don't get to ask Windows what the username is, right? That's just not how security works in the browser space. Um, but the problem really is like, you don't want to find this out so late. You want to ideally know this earlier. And the good news is you do. We notice this quickly here where we actually get this little pop-up here, but we can also see it in the error list, um, which also means we get to see it on, you know, in command line builds and stuff. And it tells us that these APIs only work on Windows. So you may say, well, why is this a warning? There should be an error. Uh, well, we are conservative people at Microsoft so we make these things warnings, but if you insist, you can just uh, right click and then say, make this an error, in which case uh, the Visual Studio will create an editor config file, which is a, a cross editor standard, if you will, for various configuration options like tabs and spaces and, and that's, and it also configures warning messages and severities. And so in your project, you can say this is an error and when you check it in, everybody on your team now has, uh, you know, gets error messages basically. So that's that. So in my case, I, yeah, I mean, how would I solve this? Well, this is actually quite hard. I would have to write my own logging system, uh, either from scratch or using uh, ASP.NET Core ID identity. I don't really feel like this, so I just will do the you know the simplest fix here. In my case, I just say friend, still better than just saying my first name. So this fixes this problem. So then the next uh, layer, I guess, of problems people run into is they want to reuse code they already have. So copy and pasting from Stack Overflow is just one example of reuse. Another one is you just copy and paste code that you already have in your own enterprise, right? Or in your own project. In my case, I wrote myself a little logging library here, 
which just gives me a static logger that I can use to log things. So let's try to use this one um, uh, from our Blazor app. The first thing I have to do is this project here is actually still for .NET Framework. So one thing I would have to do here is port it to .NET 5. Uh, so let's do this. And when I do that and I try to rebuild, now I get an error message because Yep, our target framework Net5 is basically all the cross-platform stuff, and so it doesn't actually contain the registry. So, but I can add the registry because it's just a NuGet package that I can install. So let's go to the project file and just add the registry. Well, of course not there. Uh, add the registry here, and uh, now let's see what happens when we compile. Well, we get the same experience as before. We get these warnings here that tells us that registry is only available on Windows. And so the question is, what do I do with this? So I have basically two options now. I can either decide, you know what? This code here is no longer really relevant, right? So I just delete this code, which is possible. But generally speaking, that's not what you want, right? Because uh, let's say this library is also used by a Windows desktop application. Uh, then in this case, you really don't want to lose the functionality that, that, that it provides, right? So if you're used to being able to configure the registry, uh, using the registry uh, to configure the logging path, you'd like to kind of uh, preserve this behavior, right? So one option I have is I can just declare this entire method here as being Windows specific. So we have this new attribute here, supported OS platform, and I can say Windows, which now basically says that this API only works on Windows. And now what happens, what ends up happening is here, these warnings disappear, but now I get a new warning, basically on every single call side of get logging directory. So you can use this attribute to effectively define your own platform specific helpers in your application. And you can put this on methods or properties, but you can also put this on entire types or assemblies. So you can effectively do your own little platform abstraction thingies and then say, yep, they only work on one platform. And then you get the same experience uh, in terms of warnings for your own code. But in our case, we don't want to do that. We don't want to delete the code, and we also don't want to mark the entire thing as platform specific because we want everybody to use this method here. What we really want to say is this code should only be executed when it runs on Windows. And one way to do this is you can say if operating system, and then we have these new methods here, uh, like is browser, for example, or is iOS or is Linux. So we have these helper methods. And so in our case, we would of course use the is Windows helper method, which basically tells us whether we run on Windows. And now when I surround this code with that method, you can see that the warning disappears because our analyzer is smart enough to know that this code now only runs uh, when you're actually running on Windows. And so it's fine. So you don't get a warning. Okay, so now we are green warning wise. So now let's try to reuse this library here from our Blazor WebAssembly app. And I have a small little secret here for you. Right click, add project is lame. So you can also just take this project and just drag and drop it onto the client library. And that just uh, adds the project reference for you, which is super neat. Anyway, so now we have that. Now let's go to my counter page here and let's use our, our logging library here, logging helper, my logger instance, right line. Uh, let's use interpolated string here to actually just dump out uh, where this guy is. Let me say count is this, right? And now let's go back to our application. Let's rerun the application. And now let's go to counter. And if I click on this, boom, we get an exception again. And what happened this time? Well, it says you're calling process get current process. And yeah, this is not supported on this platform. So let's take a look at the code again. What does our logging library actually do? Well, the fallback logic here says, uh, please use the, um, the current process to find out which directory the application is in, and then just try to write to that location. Um, so we can't actually ask who the current process is because again, you're running inside the browser sandbox. But you may notice that there's no warning for this. And the reason there's no warning for this is because we generally assume that, or let me start differently. 
the actual API, get current process, is a cross-platform API, right? It works everywhere in the sense that on Linux and on Mac and on Windows, you can ask what the current process is. But it doesn't work inside the browser sandbox. So this API isn't marked as being, you know, Windows or Linux specific. This API is marked as I'm unsupported in browser. And so by default, we kind of assume that most code does not actually want to run in WebAssembly because the browser sandbox is fairly restrictive. And so if we were to assume this, a lot of code would now get warnings by default, which is a pretty bad experience. And so we have to basically say like, oh, I want this library to actually work in WebAssembly. And if you look at this shared project that was generated by the template, that already does that. That already has this support platform browser in there, which basically tells you that. And you can also do other things. You can say, well, you may not actually care that certain things work on, let's say, Linux, right? So you can also remove things from this list and say, remove Linux, right? So that's one way for you to configure this uh, in some sane fashion. So in our case, we just copy this guy, we go to our logging library here, and we say, oh, we really want this thing to work in, uh, in browser as well. And as soon as I do that, now I get warnings here that tells me that, yep, good current process is not supported on the browser. And now I have the same um, options again. I can I can mark this entire API as being unsupported in this case, but I could say unsupported OS platform browser, right? In which case the warning here disappears. But now again, I get a warning at the call side again. So same story there, but we don't want to do that. What we really want to do is we want to say, well, if I'm running on browser, if operating system is browser, I do this, otherwise I do this fallback. And so now we can say, well, for, for inside the browser, we actually do support the file away APIs in the browser, but we don't actually write to disk. What we do is we just keep the whole thing virtualized in memory. So uh, if you close your WebAssembly app, it will disappear, but inside the same session, you can read and write the, uh, you can read the files that you have written. So I can literally return any, any path here because it's just a key effectively in a dictionary. So I can just say log.txt here, and that will work for WebAssembly. And so now if I run this code again, uh, there's not going to be an exception. This thing will just work. I can click on it, and it has written to a logical file called log.txt, which uh, you can actually read back with the typical you know, file read all text. Uh, I could read this back in here if I really wanted to, but I'm not going to. Uh, you can believe me that this actually works in uh, WebAssembly. The point here is really you get analyzers, uh, you get an analyzer that tells you where you're supported um, and it gives you warnings when you don't do your checks correctly. So I hope this uh, addresses the number one concern people have with non-cross-platform APIs and uh, yeah, enjoy. Bye-bye.